on the goal line. Burrow looks in his direction, pocket collapses, rolls right. He's going to run for it. Glad he's thrown it. Fires clutch. Football is loose. Washington had recovered initially, and who's got it? What is going on, everybody? And welcome to the Washington Brawl Podcast. Man, it feels really good to say that. Us here at Washington Brawl bring you the latest of the Washington football team. Man, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little rusty, so let's try this again. What is going on, everybody? And welcome to the Washington Brawl Podcast presented to you by the Brawl Network. I am your host, Parker Hamlet, and man, feels good to be, to be back, guys. Um, I'm sure a lot of you who've been reaching out, some of you who are listening, you know, kind of been off the grid for the last month, um, haven't really been doing much on the socials or kind of just been off the grid, you know, had a lot of stuff going on, guys. That's just to kind of paraphrase it, not going to get into all that, but it feels amazing to be back. Um, didn't get a chance to dive into that big win against Dallas. Um, the resurgence of Alex Smith. Um, and shockingly enough, the Washington football team is still in the thick of the NFC East race. But here we are, a day before Thanksgiving, man. Everybody's about to sit around the table. Hopefully the game doesn't get postponed like Baltimore and Pittsburgh did here a little while ago. Um, but – it feels good to be back talking about Washington football. It feels good to finally see on Thanksgiving Day a meaningful game being played against the Washington football team and the Dallas Cowboys, which is a very rich, historic rivalry. Um, hope everybody's very safe traveling for Thanksgiving this year, man. Um, sitting around the table, like I said, watching some football. Looking forward to it. Uh, I think the last fond Thanksgiving memory I actually had was, you know, the of course, RG3's huge day in 2012. Um, I, I was in the living room going ham, going off on my fellow Cowboy fans and my family. Um, there weren't many of them after that. But nonetheless, you know, like I said, plenty to talk about in the watch football world. And, you know, I got to catch up with you guys. Um, like I said, a couple weeks ago, Kyle and I picked up that huge win against the Dallas Cowboys. Um, and, of course, he goes down with injury, and Alex Smith comes in to relieve him. Alex Smith, who was quoted in saying this week that he is a little bit more of a ham guy, is also 9-0 since 2015 when he throws fewer than 200 yards and completes at least 65% of his passes. So that's a hell of a statistic, man. You don't need Alex Smith to come in and do everything on his own. You don't need Alex Smith to come in and be the catalyst for the entire team's success. As long as Alex Smith can manage, he can, he can, he, he can, he's exactly what this team needs. You know, he, he has that veteran play recognition. He, he can do those things that those younger quarterbacks like Kyle Allen and Dwayne Haskins can't do. I think, I think a perfect example of that was that completion of Cam Sims um, last week against the Bengals when um, he recognized where the safeties were immediately. His Cam Sims in the flat, he gets 12 yards. That was a play that Scott Turner was talking about. Um, and speaking of Scott Turner, since the last time I talked to you guys, his play calling has become absolutely superb. Um, when he's comfortable, man, and ever since Alex Center's been Alex Smith's been under center, man, he he's he's really coming into his own. Had some cool uh trickery with Logan Thomas this weekend, the quarterback sneak. You know, you had some end rounds with JD McKissick, some some really good motions, some really good play action. Um there are a lot of bright spots on the Washington football team right now. Um, one of them being Ronald Darby. Um, somebody that I was very high on, you know, if you go back and listen to recent episodes of Washington brawl, I told everybody, you know, it's a one-year deal, prove it, you know, played fantastic in Philadelphia when he was healthy. I know I talked about that on the DC tweet team podcast this week. Shout out to Andy Burroughs doing big things over there. Thanks for letting me get acclimated back into everything, buddy. So if you guys haven't already go check out the DC tweet team podcast, but back to Ronald Darby, um, six, six highest rated corner, according to PFF. Absolutely shut down. He bad passes down left and right on Sunday and, and pretty much throughout the season. You know, he's on an island out there. Um, if he could just kind of come down with the ball and, and actually catch it, I mean, it, we'd be talking top three corner in the league. Um, speaking of people in the secondary not making catches, uh, Troy Apke played in relief for DeShazer Everett against the Cincinnati Bengals. And, and a lot like Ronald Darby came up with a bunch of deflections rather than coming down with a bunch of turnovers. So 
good news is Shays Everett will be back Thursday tomorrow against the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, but speaking of up and coming young guys that are trying to make a name for themselves, the number two overall pick in the draft last year, Chase Young, man, took on the number one overall pick, Joe Burrow. And let me tell you, man, if you weren't watching, Chase Young was playing like a man possessed i was sharing predator gifts all over everything you know he's hyping up the team before the game you know leading into leading into the, throughout the week and i talked about this on the dc tweet team podcast you know there's that number one versus number two dynamic and you, you can't sit here and refute that it's there everybody knows it's there ron Rivera even said you know we would have taken whoever the Bengals decided not to take um but he said that he was happy that they came out with chase young but i mean hearing your head coach say that even though he's not trying to be negative he's just being frank Hearing your head coach even talk about drafting somebody else when you're supposed to be a generational talent like Chase Young, that would fire anybody up. And it definitely fired Chase Young up. He had one of his best games as a pro. Um, his numbers really don't jump out on the board with, with you with sacks, but he has been injured periodically throughout the season. But, man, he played lights out against the Bengals. Had a absolutely monstrous hit on Joe Burrow, forcing the ball out inside the three. Um, he got in Joe's face all day, man. Um, and, and to me, this was this was a redemption game for Chase Young. You know, he, he was making up for, for that costly penalty against the Detroit Lions that pretty much ended up costing them the game last week. So huge bounce back game for Chase. You know, it's nice seeing him go out there and, and, and be everything that he's advertised to be. And, and, and not just that, but another thing that I really like about the 2020 season, as far as it is being a Washington football fan, of course, isn't our record, um, but it has a lot to do with me just kind of looking around and seeing people that don't know who Chase Young is and, and watching him become a household name, even on a three and seven football team. So the kid's special. Everybody knows he's special. Um, somebody else who's very special is, like I said, the number one overall pick, Joe Burrow, who unfortunately went down with injury um, while the game was nine to seven. Very, very tight knit game up to that point. Um, as everybody knows, Joe Burrow is having a fantastic season for the Cincinnati Bengals, forming some chem chemistry with T. Higgins, A.J. Green, Joe Mixon, all those guys. Um, kind of showed that the future was bright in Cincinnati, one of the better young quarterbacks in the league. You can make an argument that he is the, the best young quarterback in the league right now. Um, went down um, towards ACL, MCL, and had some very bad structural damage. Chase Young, um, Dwayne Haskins, Terry McLaurin, you know, former Ohio State teammates over there, you know, grieving with him because it, it was a rough injury, man. I remember I was in the barbershop watching, uh, I think it was the third quarter or whenever the injury happened, and they they didn't show the replay. And, and that's crazy to me because the Alex Smith injury in and of itself was absolutely just cataclysmic. It, it was it was awful to look at. And to be honest with you, I had, uh, my buddy uh, JJ hit me up and actually sent me the full replay of it, and it was absolutely disgusting. And I honestly can't fault them for – not replaying it and, and 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 you know a win is a win and i'm happy the watch football team came out on top but it this really did suck the fun out of the game because once burrow came off field ryan finley relieves him on a moment's notice with a pass rush jonathan allen montez sweat deron Payne, tim settle who, who played absolutely lights out and is really earning his keep here you got a defensive front that is going to come after you and they came after ryan finley early and often so you know good win for the washington football team um Victory Monday, Victory Tuesday, Victory Wednesday. It's always going to boost the morale in the building. Um, and it's definitely a good place to go into next week um, against your division rivals with huge NFC East implications on the line with Philadelphia kind of struggling. Uh, the Giants only having two wins against us. So the NFC East, man, it, it, it hangs in the balance. Um, as far as some of the bad stuff that I, that I did see, um, oh, I, I can't even go to the bad stuff before I get into Antonio Gibson, man. Leads all rookies and – um rushing touchdowns um you know terry mclaurin played absolutely lights out football proving that he is an elite receiver in this league so the young guys are absolutely balling out man steven sims got a nice little touchdown from alex smith um i thought ryan kerrigan played a great game on very limited snaps you know weird couple weeks for him talking about possibly getting traded um but like i said man there's plenty to be plenty plenty to be thankful for on this thanksgiving week Fabian murray got a nice little interception but something that just needs to be addressed, man, is the kicking situation. You know, Randy Bullock didn't play much better than Dustin Hopkins, but Dustin Hopkins is just becoming too much of a liability at the kicker position. And this is with an offense that more often than not cannot find the end zone. And, and, and Ron Rivera, who is very quick to move on for Dwayne Haskins, I understand different positions, who is very quick to move on for Dwayne Haskins, is, is sticking by Dustin Hopkins for some reason. I get it. You're late in the season. 
Hopkins still has moments where he he shows that he's still a good kicker in this league, but I just see more moments where he shows that he shouldn't even be in the starting lineup. I mean, it was a doink fest early on. So I, they got to make a change of kicker, man, especially with how stagnant this offense really can be sometimes. Um, but, you know, let's look forward to next week. You know, you got the Washington football team taking on the Dallas Cowboys, led by Mike McCarthy, um, down Dak, Dak Prescott. Um, it's it's really hard to say who's going to come out on top on this one, guys. It really is. You, you want to say that Kyle Allen, with him at the helm, we absolutely blew them out. So, you know, you think it would be even easier with Alex Smith at the helm, who, who's playing seemingly better football. As much as I want to agree with that, I just – Andy Dalton's back in the lineup. And, you know, I don't understand Andy Dalton was in the lineup against, you know, like I said, Kyle and led, led Washington football team. But, you know, we're a little bit later in the season now. Both these teams have a little bit of different identity. I know Zeke's kind of cleaned up his, his turnovers a little bit. Um, I know that the Cowboys are – yeah, the Cowboys are favored to win by three, um, over under 46 points. Um, Washington, though, man, the, the big thing with me is just the primetime matchups. Um, Washington has not had a, a primetime matchup so far this season. Everybody knows that they do not fare very well in primetime matchups. Um, I know Kirk Cousins all time is like 0-9 in primetime. That's not far from what our primetime record has been the last couple of years. Um, and we actually weren't slated any primetime games, I think, outside of this year's, this this season. So um, Dallas has won eight of the nine meetings between the teams on Thanksgiving Day, that one being the sole, the sole survivor, the sole exception of the RG3 game. Um, back in 2012, um, I, I feel like the Washington football team can cover here, and I, I don't think Dallas is a lock. I don't think either team is really a lock. Um, like I said, you, you could talk about the last matchup all you want, but this, these are two completely different teams. If anything, I do feel like Washington looks a lot better going into the second matchup. Um, rookie running back Antonio Gibson um, you know, had over 100 yards of scrimmage last week, and like I said, he's leading all rookie running backs in touchdowns. Um, and our running game was very was struggling a lot throughout the season, and, and it, it definitely looked good against Dallas. And if, if Tony Gibson can repeat that, then I think we're in better shape. If anything, I feel like we have taken a step forward at the quarterback position. You know, maybe not, you know, you, you don't have your franchise quarterback, but you have somebody, like I said earlier, who can make those elite decisions, who who, who has that veteran presence. And, and, you know, like I think it was Terry McLaurin and Tony Gibson said, that just makes all the difference in – the world. I know one thing. If Dallas Cowboys show up like they did last time, it, it, it's going to get ugly, and the Washington Football Team is going to is going to turn this into a slugfest real quick. Now, the first match, of course, being a FedEx. This one, of course, being a Jerry World. I don't think that matters too much. Um, I think Dallas is going to look a lot better in this match than they did in the first one. Um, and of course, you know, you got younger guys on Dallas coming to their own, like CD Lamb, um, who had that phenomenal catch last week. You know, you got young guys on defense, Jalen Smith. You know, missed his first year in the league with that really bad injury. You know, former Notre Dame, go fight in Irish. Um, but to me, it's just a matter of I, I think this is gonna be one of those who has the ball last kind of games, man. I really do. I think this is gonna be a high scoring game. I really do. Um, and I see the Washington football team coming out on top. Like I said, I, I, Antonio Gibson alone, his presence coming out of the backfield, you know. Scott Turner and everybody on the offensive staff has has gotten him a lot more involved as a pass catcher. I just don't think that this Dallas defense has changed much, and I don't think that they'll fare well against a Washington offense that you know has got two young guys and Terry McLaurin, Antonio Gibson, Logan Thomas can be very dangerous. He was very good in the, in the last time they they meet up, had a great touchdown. So I think that this Washington football team has the Dallas Cowboys number this year. They're they're having a bad season. I don't care how many watermelons Mike McCarthy smashes that coaching staff is an absolute joke and i see the watch football team coming out on top 28 to 21 um bold prediction i think alex smith has another career day i think he finishes over 300 passing yards two touchdowns a little bit better of a stat line um I, <laughs> a lot of people are gonna say it's kind of a risky bet you know I, you got a lot of those Dwayne Haskins enthusiasts saying, oh, well, Alex Smith isn't playing any better than Dwayne Haskins was. I don't know how he could sit here and have so much hope and so many, so many aspirations for him. I don't think it's as much as his hope and aspirations for him as as much as this Dallas defense is, is just historically that bad. I'm doing it wrong, man. Alex Smith, phenomenal story. You know, I, I, two, three years ago, he was he didn't think he was going to make, you know, he was septic, you know, we're going to lose his leg. And now he's in a position to win the NFC East and, I really like what Alex said. You know, Alex told the media 
we can only control what we control and everything else will fall into place. And, and that's kind of been Ron Rivera's sentiment from the beginning, man, is, you know, you got to let everything play out. You can't sit here and control everything. So I think that Ron Rivera, we, we might owe him an apology come the end of the season. If th- can't, things keep going the way they're going. Like I said, the New York Giants can't beat anybody other than the Washington football team. So they're not at the thick of the division race. Philadelphia, you get Carson Wentz leading the NFL in turnovers with 19 total turnovers. And we be- we've already beat them once week one. I absolutely blew them out. And, you know, that defense got in his face. And that's going to happen the next matchup, too. So I, it seems like our only kryptonite in the NFC East really is the New York Giants. And both of those meetings are over. And they're not winning enough games outside of us to even have a chance to fare at first place in the division unless they go on a hell of a run, which is not impossible. This, that, that New York Giants team is really coming around. James Bradbury, you know, Joe Judge, is, that defense, Joe Judge is really turning things around for them. But if it comes down to the Eagles, Cowboys, and Washington football team, I think Vegas and, and even most of the NFL football world is starting to realize the watch football team fares a lot better than most because of that veteran leadership at quarterback and because of that defense, man. Like I said, Montez Sweat, Ronald Darby, Chase Young, Jonathan Allen, Tim, Tim Settle, man. Tim Settle played an absolutely phenomenal game against the Cincinnati Bengals. So, you know, the da- Dallas Cowboys are coming off a win against the Minnesota Vikings, but don't let that fool you too much. The Minnesota Vikings aren't exactly having a stellar year themselves. They're at the bottom of the NFC North right now, um, or at least they're clawing at it with the Detroit Lions, who did beat us. So I guess I'm not going to throw too much shade there. But um, like I said, bold prediction. I think Alex Smith's have a big game. I think we're going to win by one touchdown, 28 21. Um, I'm going to be at work, unfortunately. I'll probably be able to catch the game a little bit. Won't be able to watch around my friends and family, which sucks because this is really the first year in a long time where I, I felt very confident about a, a matchup against the Dallas Cowboys. So I just I, I'm very excited to see how things play out. And you know, like I said, huge NFC East complications on the line. So thought I'd hit you guys with kind of a quick update pod, let you know I'm alive, let you know I'm breathing, let you know everything's okay. Got a bunch of guests lined up. They're gonna come on on the show, some friends, some family. Um, so people around the Washington football team world. Um, and of course, this episode of the Washington Ball Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. Make sure you go on manscaped.com and use promo code BRAWL to get the Lawn Mower 3.0. Got a nice little flashlight, rechargeable dock, you know, skin safe technology, no nicks right there, as you can see. Um, if you get the uh, perfect package 3.0, that also comes with, you know, your t shirts, your bag, comes with the, uh, Crop Reviver, which is a toner for your sack. It's absolutely sensational, man. Once you're all shaving up, you're good to go. Spray it on, you know, squirt, squirt, you're good. Not only that, but, you know, it's getting a little cold outside, but, you know, you can still chafe, you still get caught. You get swamp ass, man. You guys know what swamp ass is. I I, I try to avoid it at all costs, and it's it, it's made that much easier when you have the Crop Preserver, which is also a part of the Perfect Package 3.0. It's perfect de- deodorant for your balls. Like I said, the normal market value of the performance pack 3.0 is around roughly around $89. But if you use promo code BRAWL, that is promo code B-R-A-W-L BRAWL, you can get 10% off the performance package 3.0 today. I don't regret it. Everybody at the Brawl Network loves it. It's a great product. I, I can't wait to get more of it, man. Um, I know that Manscaped is shipping worldwide now, places they've never shipped before, so don't let the distance fool you. You can get it whenever you want. Like I said, manscaped.com, promo code Brawl, B R A W L brawl for ten percent off. Trust me, Washington brawl listeners, your balls will thank you. Um, you can find us on all social medias at Washington Brawl. Um, got a link tree and all bios to help you kind of find us wherever you need to find us. Um, got the Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Um, not 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 delving into the TikTok, even though I've got a couple um, recommendations for that. Um, the Washington Brawl, man, 21 game of the week's coming back, of course, guys. Not on next gen because God knows getting a PS5 is like trying to pull teeth. Um, but we're going to come back with our weekly matchups. Got some other guys other than uh, Boy Dev from the Redskins Addicts that actually want to go at us. So you're going to get some games over that. Get that going. Get that streaming. Um, make sure you head over to brawlnetwork.com. Um, check out our latest work on there. Read some articles. Click, share, all that good stuff. You can find this and other episodes of Washington Brawl Podcast wherever you find podcasts, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify. It doesn't matter. We are everywhere. And also, while you're on LeBronNetwork.com, pick up some nice merch, man. Got some Washington Ball t-shirts, uh, Sima t-shirt. We got the uh, Ron, Riverboat Ron t-shirt. We got plenty of stuff you can, you can buy over there and support your boys. Next time you guys are going to hear from me will be post-Dallas, post-Thanksgiving. So like I said, man, spend time with your loved ones. It was nice talking to everybody. 
Um, it, it feels phenomenal to be back, guys. I'm in a very good place. It just it, it feels real good to talk watch football with you guys, man. It's been too long. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody listening. Thanks for if you made it this far. I really appreciate you. This has been the Washington Ball Podcast presented to you by the Brawl Network. <laughs>